all yours. And and mostly um, just as far as oops, I gotta say the got it thing. Um, mostly as far as with the game changers and kind of to give a different um, view on bigger flies. Uh, I know we went to the full extreme last week with the really small ones and. The fun part with this is it's just kind of tires the light, right? You can do a lot of different things. You can do some micros on here and I'll switch my camera in a minute, but you can do some smaller ones. Uh, you can do all the way up to bigger. And for those bass folks who are on here, this is um, March and April fly size here. And again, smaller bait fish. It, it's just something else to have. It's the same process across the board as far as a lot of our others, but I think when we hear game changers and then you watch, you know, the 6,000 different videos of them and you walk in or you're trying to buy online, it's like, where do you start? What, what do you get? So a couple different things that I kind of put together from my buying experience in this and uh, do as I, <laughs> as I say, don't do as I do. Isn't that a, a real thing? So I'm going to show a couple different things in regards to what we're looking at right here. So with the game changer, the whole part of that is the articulation, how it moves. And with my camera, I hope I didn't knock it. Uh, this is one of the kits that I have gone to. And what I love with this is because it gives me an opportunity to kind of size as I go. So I can go across, I can go down, um, but it gives me some different options as to the size of the articulation. And it is a um, little bit like this one was only 60 pieces. And then they'll have all the different sizes in here. And you can see I'm kind of working my way through it. So the more empty, I don't come in to the top ones as often. Um, but those are, I kind of have a different plan, but just to show you, they also at your fly shops, uh, you can find fish skull tends to be the most popular as far as just a good starter kit. So you have the multiple different shanks and here, and the easiest way to, to do all of this is have something large that you can kind of work on, lay them out. And it's kind of like connecting paper clips. Honestly, that's what it reminds me of the most. Um, but you're gonna be able to lay these out in sizes that you want because you do want graduated from a, a smaller size to the next size, and then we'll continue building on that. And then again, they go up rather large, heavier. So you're gonna use a heavier hook. You're gonna have a heavier rod to cast these. Um, these micros, to give you an idea, on this and when you, you try to buy things online, you're like, oh, micro, yeah, micro. And well, let me try to find a comparison on a micro. Um, so these are little, little tiny ones and I don't even think I can hold it. Um, these are three pieces that are put together and you can see they don't even equal two. Um, the micros are very, very small works great for just a small articulation, has the same like loop and then the same open connection where you would put those together. The micros are great. And here is, here's one that was built out of a micro. And so I had put it in pheasant tail, kind of knotted for legs and then did the whole rest of it. No eyes, no nothing, just a big, ugly, um, but it's lighter to throw and I can throw this on a five weight. And, and that's a big difference too, is, you know, tie to what you fish. If you're not going to fish an eight weight, um, you might not want some of these big, ugly ones. So again, this one huge, just, and not really, it's, it's just bigger. It's going to pick up more water as you pick that up and, um, best more from kind of boat, um, aspect on there. So my favorite thing about Game Changer is this is like um, craft 101 because the materials as we get going. So this one started out basically as almost all white, a little bit of pink, a little bit of accent and green. All this top part is marker. Um, so it's a great time right now. 
and I've said this before, back to school, yeah, stock up on Sharpies or whatever your preference preference is for a um, basically a waterproof. Here's one that started out all green and you can see the top variation, that's all marker. So it is something where you can change these to um, what you wanna do. Here again, different, a little bit more buggy look. And, and this is was specific to this to give it a little bit more flair. When they taper out and you can see all the little bends in this. So I can turn this thing all around and, and every little part of that joint moves. And yet there's no big gap in between the material. And that's kind of the, the, what we're going for is that, that tapered look, looks like a bait fish and then the rest of it's just fun. So these are um, flies that I would say, turn on your music, expect to spend about an hour um, to maybe a little bit longer on your first one, just kind of zone out, tie on them and mostly um, just have fun with it. It's kind of like any art project. Don't hate it at the beginning. Don't hate it in the middle. Don't hate it at the end. And then when you can take scissors to it, that's something that creates um, a little bit different look. So again, a little bit more on the bait fish, but you can take scissors and you can shape that profile the way you want it. Um, this one has another articulation in here, but it, it's don't throw it away until you're completely done with it. And I think that's the, the other part um, just as far as with these, it, it is, it's a trial and error. The other side is, is that you probably have materials sitting around that you can use. Um, so it doesn't mean go out, buy all the most expensive stuff. Uh, I'm going to kind of show as we go through these, um, some alternate materials you can use if you're using what you have, and then also what to look for, because there is some brand name material that that's specifically for this kind of formation. So I'm gonna start on my thread on this. I've got my Beavis, um, I'm on an eight odd. And this never takes a lot. And just as I say that, right? So we're going to the black. Um, there you go. We knew, we knew that would happen, right? The minute you hit record, redo. Unbelievable. I've only done, you know, five of these as a setup. We all know this, right? <laughs> you need to tighten, you go, seriously? So where that just came into play is on this part right here. And that's where it just broke my thread. Um, so it is something where I, some of the, some folks like the, the bigger, more of a floss and come in. See if I can do that and not have it catch on that little burr. So what I've also done too, and you can see on this first part, and, and especially working with the smaller sizes when you downscale these, this is going to be on the larger sides just since we're on the video. Uh, but one of the things is I connect these ahead of time and mostly because first I'm going to hold that last hoop right in, you're gonna test your, your vise because you're gonna put that little tiny loop in there. I'm gonna come in and on the tail section, it's gonna be a lot like anything that we're working with. Uh, as far as your marabou, that makes a great tail. If you have some uh, tips left over as far as some hackle you can. The length of this, and just to give you kind of an idea as far as width, so we're not going to this length, we're gonna to go to kind of more of that three fourths of a full. So this is gonna be with this one plus another one on top of that. So I'm kind of gauging it from a lot of people at this point, lick your fingers, do whatever to get that marabou um, to kind of cooperate. I don't recommend that, especially as we start teaching back in person, keep a wet sponge or something. Um, just as far as not having to lick your fingers, lick the marabou. We all know with marabou too, uh, it, it is dyed. And so as you do that, you're gonna have a green little mustache. Um, come in, 
put that to the side. So same as you would start a lot of our other flies, anchor that in. And this is just my building block to start it. And you can come in now with some flashaboo and kind of remember <clears throat> flashaboo, kind of very, very smooth, no crank, cranks to it, no, um, doesn't, it doesn't have anything other than just it's really cool. Um, from that part of it, I'm going to come in and add a little bit of crystal to it with this part. Come in mostly at the top, or you can come around just like how we put on legs to manage it. Come in. I'm going to just lay that right on the top section, hold it in, and I've got that kind of built up. I only want a little bit of it. I'm going to come in just past the tail section, so it's a little bit longer on that part. And from here, the rest is repetition because the tail going in, and you can layer this as far as black, white, green, olive. You can continue on that part of it. The part where we start getting into um, different fillers and, and what that does is it's just going to create that dimension. It's going to create that taper. So in some of our different flash, they come in a width dimension. And if you start out with the largest one that you have in your pile, so you can see kind of the difference as far as size wise. If I start out with this, then all of a sudden I'm going to have to cut. I'm going to trim. Things are going to look kind of just um, really bumpy. So I'm going to start with a smaller section of this and the tie in. Same as what we do with a lot. I come in on basically a 45 degree to mine. Uh, I don't really come in and do a lot cutting here as far as to make it tie in. It will. So I'm gonna come in, hold it, position it, come back around, anchor, and I'm gonna go up towards the eye. This fly is, is mostly everything we've learned not to do because we're gonna crowd this eye, we're gonna crowd this back area too. Um, there's a lot of like overcrowding because we want the materials to do certain things. So this you can see is it lays across the vein. We have, it's almost like a feather. All I'm going to do on this is I'm going to pull it and kind of convince it where I'm getting it to go the same direction. I'm taking that thread and I'm trying to get the thread as close as I can to the shank. And you're laying these almost one on top of the other. Um, very deliberate. It's not fast. This material has a little bit of stretch to it. So as you can do about one, two wraps on this, give it a tug. And this is where, like I said, you're gonna put your, your vice to the test because that little bit that's holding it, that's what we want it to do. And if it doesn't, then it's gonna go shooting across the room um, and you're gonna be holding on to it, but we're just gonna build that up. So it kind of has a little dandelion tuft to it. Move everything kind of back on that because I want it to lie down, come in, I've anchored that in and cut and what is and move that out. Material? I'm sorry? What is that material you just tied in? So that one's going to be on kind of, um, let me pull this up, Bob. Um, the, the name of it. So, if you so airline. Blaine, oh, he's got his own. <laughs> oh yeah, he does. Oh yeah, he does now. Um, and so what it is, but you can also use, um, if you've got, you know, all the different crystal flashes that we have. So you can use a lot of these different. What I like with this is the body to it. So you can see how much more thick that is. Yeah. And, and it's different than like this one. So okay. see how just our regular, well, this one just has a little bit more texture to it. But yeah, yeah, and it's it's Just not horribly like insane. Yeah, you get um, yeah. I, it's you get a decent amount more than what you and I I just like the colors that it comes into. So the one you know that I just put on. Um, 
All right, so I'm gonna come in on this one and I'm not gonna add any more at this stage. That's all I want the tail section to do. I, because of where the wrist would be basically on a fish or a bait fish. So we want that little dip as we start building up everything too. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm just gonna whip finish. If you want a hand whip finish, great. I've got so much of this eye that is available uh, that you could, you could continue to kind of creep up on that a little bit. If you wanted to add one more layer in or a different color, uh, this would be, you know, if you wanted, just go ahead and show you on there. You can come in and it won't impede on the motion of this. And it's not like hackle because I'm just doing anchor wraps in tight. I can come in and now I've got a little bit of this pink coming in. Same thing. So this one, I'm going to make sure I'm pulling it around. And you can see where that thread and I'm getting as close as I can to the shank. Maybe. Oh, I just saw a move. Um, is that two sided or? or this one is a little bit more on the one sided. Oh. It is actually when when I if you were to brush it out, it would be two sided. Um, All right. Okay. All right. So that one's anchored in. I can come in again, close cut. I can clean that up a little bit, push those to the back. Okay. And now come in. And this is the part two um, for UV finishers. Um, this would be a part where you could most definitely come in with your UV. And you're not going to, you're not clogging up the eye of this. Um, but if you wanted to add a little bit more strength on that, you can cut on my, the micro ones. A lot of times I'll just give it a good tie in. And then I don't, I just move everything in my vise. I actually don't start and stop my thread very much. You have nothing to work with um, as far as space. So here would be, Again, if you wanted to add in a little bit, only just giving it just that little bit of confidence. Come in, add your UV, hit it once. Um, you know, nothing like having that fly break apart at the end when you're fishing it. I couldn't quite and, tell that second material that you tied in, was it a little bit longer or was it a little bit different color? It's pink. It, it's actually, it's a, it, it's a little bit pink. The other one's called bonefish. So you can see a little bit of a difference here. Yeah. So it just gives that little bit of pink hint to it. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see it side by side. I couldn't tell yeah. before. Yep. And, and with that too, I mean, it, that's what I like. That's what's so fun about this is it's so dealer's choice. I mean, you just can use what you have um, on different things too. Keep in mind, as far as the profile, what we've started with are on the smaller sizes. And then as we go up, we would just graduate and move up. Um, and then again, ideally you get to something longer like this and you're not having to come back with the scissors so much and, and do those haircuts or shaping it. So now I've got these two points, they're connected. I've already added in my second. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this. And right in here is kind of the trickiest part. And you can see, again, your vise is doing all the work, holding in place. This can easily move around, but as I build that longer, um, I wanna be able to, to make sure I can continue to move things out of the way. I don't add in now my next one um, as far as a connection. I'm just going to do the short one connected to a hook to show you the wire connection. And we'll kind of build from there. And then I can do depending on time frame or anything. So same thing. I'm going to start on this one up at the front. I'm going to continue. Lay over. Let's see if I have a burr there. Nope. Good to go. And this is the part where it feels a little bit uncomfortable because we wouldn't be pushing any other fly this close. And what I wanna do on this one is I'm gonna to continue to ramp 
almost as if I'm trying to grab that circle in there. And the reason is, is I don't want to see that connection as I add in. And so as you're kind of going up that ramp and the, they're more exaggerated on the, the bigger size, if I had done this in reverse and it doesn't matter as to the play of your fly when you're done, you can go whichever way you want to for the connection. You could go the eye in and like how I did this one, or you could go the other direction and it's really not going to affect the play of your fly on there. So I've got this kind of added in and now's the part where you can add a lot of dimension. And what I like to do on this part of it, again, is kind of showing the different materials. We've been working with a thinner. So in comparison, we had the bonefish one, and then now we have another. Same material, Bob, as far as it's another chocolate brand. And mainly what he made this for was just the filler, is just to, to take up that space and that connection. I like the, the different materials. This one's a little bit more bulky. Uh, it, it is meant to go a little bit, goes a long way. But I can show you on this. And it's just, it, it is made on both sides of the line. So you have that but it tends to always want to find a north or a south. And, and so it's easy to work with on this side of it. So same thing, I'm going to come in. I don't do a whole lot to clear this material in here. You can if it makes you more comfortable as far as just trying to get a good thread that you're grabbing as opposed to all the materials. Just like any streamer, we want to make sure that we're keeping everything kind of going the same way that we're not grabbing um, our material. Come in, grab that in place. And then I'm going to advance my thread. And what I tend to do is stop my thread where I want to do a color change, because otherwise I'm just going to keep on going. Um, and so instead, where my thread stops here, I'm going to add in a green or maybe the pink again. Here, when I hold up the material, and I've talked about this before, if you can get used to not snipping off like, oh, I only need this much. And then you cut that off. You're going to end up with a lot less waste and just, just try to work with it in your hand um, as opposed to cutting all these little nubs. So on this, it is overlapping. And each one, because again, it, it always tends to feel like it has a little bit of elastic to it. So each top and bottom is kind of where my snug is, where I'm coming in and I'm, I'm making sure that's in the right place and snug it back in place. And it's creating that more perpendicular. Turn it. Coming up and I'm almost to where I want to stop and do a color change. I think I can get is just that kind of day, isn't it? And that's what happens when you, with your vice. I'm gonna come back in. It's a perfect learning moment, right? You come back in, you're grabbing that little. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn no off, comment. you can turn off the, you can turn off the recording now, Mick. <laughs> oh, this goes on youtube you know what <laughs> if, you, if you guys weren't laughing at me you'd be laughing at no me. no man. listen we've all gone through that well it, <laughs> and what's funny is is this especially for a game changer how somebody starts with this this is exactly what happens Right, you're you're flying along, and you're like, "Yeah, I got this." Um, yeah, and then all of a sudden it goes flying across. And uh, all right, so at least again, a couple good learning points in there. It's nice and in there, um, but everything's anchored in. I finished off this portion portion of it. So unlike other flies, I didn't lose the whole thing. I only lost this part that I was working with. So I think with with some of this again, good lesson again. Um, it, it is a heavy handed fly as to how you're trying to manipulate the materials. It is something where 
um, it, your, your vice will tell you. And the other part is I'm not twerking on this. So I'm not pulling from here all the way back on this material. I am, I am up on that hook shank. I'm trying to help it some come around, trying to help it some, but you're not yanking. Um, and, and I think that's the one thing too, as far as the recovery, when you get done with some of your materials, especially for um, anybody who, who's just wanting to see what this does or try it out. Um, the other thing is there's no harm, no foul. You get these materials tied in like this one, do a half hitch, put a whip finish in it. That's a, you know, streamers are so cool because we you cover up so much stuff. Um, so you can get away with adding a, a few extra knots uh, as you learn this as well. So I'm going to come back in, going to clean that up. And I'm coming back on that because I want that, that profile going back. So I've actually come in and kind of nubbed it back over on. I've got it in. Again, this would be where if you want to tie in just kind of a confidence knot as you build out more, tie in your half itch now. Uh, or tie in your whip finish now. And that would be the time to do it. With um, some of the other, let me grab, I'm going to do this so you can see a better color variance on. Again, very similar material. You can see how thick this is. I mean, this is like, like a full, full coat. Um, if you can get into the hang of holding all of this in your hand while you tie. Again, you're not going to get a lot of little pieces. Um, just so I don't knock you guys off the table, I'm going to go with that um, and cut a smaller piece. And then I'm also going to grab because fuller chenille can come into play as well. Makes that really buggy look as um, you kind of start to develop. I love this stuff. It's almost hypnotizing. Um, it has very thin, has a little bit of the iridescent to it, a little bit of purple, the UV in there. And I just want a little dab of it. I don't want a lot. I just want some. So I'm going to cut off a little section on here because you're applying this in the same manner. So you've got your strip of it. It all has kind of a north and south to it. You, you can see it as you go. If, if the other way it looks like a bad... Um, you're, you're trying to force things against the grain, figure out your up and down. So I want to use kind of the north and south on here. I'm going to tie it in. Uh. Same thing. And, and on this, same part of it. I'm just folding this over. Again, I'm always trying to make that thread or material get as close as I can, put in my securing. I just wrapped it once. I only want one. I'm not gonna add any more, honestly. <laughs> this would, and again, don't yank on it. You guys can all laugh. Now I, now I got it all twisted everywhere because I was getting ready to tie it off. Just adds a little bit of longer. I've got a black that I use and it's really leggy. Um, same exact material, but it just creates kind of a, a little bit of that look. Just that look. Um, pretty cool on there. This one again is a little bit, it's more thick going to hold up. Um, you can come back in again with your white, depending on the color choices that you do. This comes in everything. Uh, and so kind of the same as what I talked about. There's a north and south with the material when it's sewn in. If I were to try to tie it in this way, I, I'd fight it a little bit more. I tend to always look for that front section. You can clear a little bit of this because it's so bulky. And same, going to come up on the top. That's what I was saying is this is a very repetitive um, fly. So I'll get this last section in. I just heard that pop again. Yep. yep. Oh. So yeah, probably not the, the first tie to, 
fly to Thai um, in a beginner's class? Oh no. <laughs> but everybody comes but bob everybody comes walking in going i want to tie a game changer yeah. um and and so again yeah. um this this gives you kind of an idea how how this lays around now that is one full wrap around wow and you can see how how much it already covered yeah. so i'm going to come in at this point going to anchor this off I'm finally moving over to a part that won't pop out of my hook, out of my vice so much. Come in, same, it's anchored. Um, and on this part, time out. Who's tying next week? That's all I want to know. <laughs> Don't everybody volunteer at once. Uh, I think I think we're going to your uh, your Kabari flies, John. <laughs> well, actually, Al Beatty has asked me to tie a couple of them on his Friday night ones, so I've got to do some practicing in front of the camera. Good. Anyhow, <laughs> we we will be a perfect. Uh, yeah, are we about out of time here? No, I still we're only thirty eight minutes in. Man. Um. Anyway, okay. So here we're going to recover on this one. No, we're not. So let me just show you how to connect these. <laughs> oh, oh man. <laughs> Bob, you're you're on a hot mic too. <laughs> oh, I, I'm feeling so sorry for you hear all the grief you're going through. It, it's actually it well, you know, it, it always works this way, right? Um, just from you know, it you can tie this thing 25 times your own your own way and um but it is just the way it goes it's actually i like it from the standpoint of just being able to use the different materials let me see nope all right so then we're gonna just kind of pull out the little wrapper room and then look this is the magic of video cameras because then you just go to this um <laughs> so Damn it. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to bleep this one too, along with delete it, Mick. Uh, let me go into, I'm gonna just show one section of this because I think the other part is, is the connection sometimes um, as to what wire to use and how to connect. Um, so I'm gonna use a blank shank on this part as if this were the finished materials, actually. And um, basically the connection point. So all your materials done back on this side, you've got your hook here. And a lot of times there, there are, there's every opinion as to connecting your wires uh, with articulated flies. You can go through the eyes, you can lead it all different ways on that. And with most of these size flies, I don't need um, something that's going to last me to the next century. Uh, but there is, there are a couple different brands. Um, Senyos, if you can find it, um, it's going to be this black beetle on. Um, so you get heavier on the materials and things like that. But the wire does make a difference. Jewelry wire, um, test your brake strength uh, because a, you know a necklace breaking is a little bit different than this, but there are some materials out there as to your wire connections. And it is something um, that makes a difference. I know the first few times when I was tying bigger streamers and things, Mm -hmm. um, it was something where I thought, well, can't we just, I, I can use my other wire, right? I can use, um, I, I've got wire. You can use this. No, it breaks too much. So you, you specifically need, so I've cut off a section as far as my wire with your, and I'm going to switch back over to a white so that you can see on the wire portion of this. And I put down a, a thread base onto my hook shank and 
from there, then I'm going to take the wire. Mm -hmm. And this is specifically to smaller. If you go with larger ones, you can double it through. You can go back through the eyes. Again, smaller flies. I'm going to come on my 45 degree. I'm just going to go up. Keeping that wire to the side. And so it's, it's right on my end of it. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to loop my wire through. And this would work with either side. So if I've already sealed off and I did my connection on this side, you could easily, same thing. On this, then I'm gonna come back up and I've got my thread dropped at the front. And so what I'm go going to do on that is I'm gonna keep my wire and I want it again on that same kind of 45. I want it exactly at your angle and come back. It's got a little bit of play in here. And so I don't want this all the way up here. I don't want it to gapping at the back. On this, I do not come up underneath where on some of my dry flies to keep the tail up, I'll come up underneath. Here, I'm just gonna keep it as one. I don't need to do anything else with this wire as far as I don't have to drop it through, run it back on larger streamers. The technique I'm talking about is you would actually take both and you're going to drop it through the eye and then come back. And that's when you're going to wrap it in again. Um, so you'll see that. And again, it's just one added. You come back in with your bad scissors or the ones labeled wire. Cut that again and continue on. And it has enough play in there. It has enough up and down, so it's not gonna foul on you. Uh, if you leave too much of a gap, then it is going to come around and it's gonna wanna try to catch into uh, your leader. And the other thing is, is it doesn't give the, the best movement in there too. If you have it too far out, meaning the wire gap is too far out. If it's something where you want more of a gap in there, you can add a bead in between, glass bead, a plastic bead, anything you want to. Um, and it just adds a, an extra color in there. So that is, I think I'm pretty much done with tying tonight. So anybody have any questions on game changers? These, I actually like these. I'm going to go back and rip this guy apart and fix him the right way. Anybody have any, anything at all? Yeah, I got one question. What, uh, you, you fish the game changer? I have, um, so I have a hard time fishing a lot of these bigger flies for a long period of time, Bob, um, because they're just big, right, to throw them. Um, yep. So usually I like the smaller size that I showed earlier uh, because I can throw this one on my five weight Yeah. without any problem. You start getting in these bigger ones, six, seven, eight weights. Yeah. Amy, I would think those big ones would be great for northerns. Oh, yeah. Especially yep. in the spring when they're spawning and in close, you know. I remember well, he, uh, he designed that, I think, for carp. Oh, I, I, I find that hard to believe. Carp won't hit anything that size, I don't think. They're, most of the flies that we fish with for carp around here are about a size 10s and 12s, uh, fairly small. Huh. Well, I don't it, mind her, so I, I just have no opinion either way. Yeah, well, I, and some of these, if if anybody came from the standard world of fishing, you know, just the regular regular fishing, um, this is a common size lure that you would use on, you know, a standard setup. Uh, I actually was looking through too because we used to have just a a winter plastic lure um that was rubber whatever but used in the spring and it was called a grass pig it was made by havoc it's hard to find and when you can find them they're really expensive but it was this translucent white and at least four to five inches long and that thing would get bass all day long so that's where i've had this the the part of it is is these are actually extremely light there's no added lead to it there's nothing else um to it so it's gonna it 
it takes a little bit of practice before trying to get it to the right length or right depth that you want. Um, and then the stripping pattern is constant. So it's not like what we're used to as far as strip, strip, weight, strip, strip, weight. Um, this one is your, that's what they have the gloves for um, because you're moving this thing constantly to look um, more on the fish side. It looks a little like the same shape as an old, uh, what we used to call a pikey minnow back in the day. Yep. I mean, it, it, if, if any of us can find those rubber lures that, you know, again, they were just a go-to um, for any kind of just standard fishing. And you, you sunk those with a little bit of split shot, got down about six feet or so, and just all day long. So it does, uh, it does give you some different options on that. I was talking yeah. to a couple of guys about fishing the uh, North Fork River, which used to be a really great uh, wild trout water. But uh, probably four or five years ago, they had incredible floods and it just wiped a bunch of stuff out. And there was a dam at Dot Mill and it damaged that and they decided to take it out. And the stripers have been moving up and out competing the trout. But the stripers are absolutely huge. And the guy was talking about catching a fish. He says, yeah, it wasn't too big. It was only 10 pounds. And I asked him, really? So what, what, what size, do, what, what's a good size fish? And he says, well, it's not unusual to catch fish 20 to 25 pounds. I said, what do you use? He says, a game changer. Yep. Yeah, and it, it they, I think the part where it's fun, and I, I say this over and over again, but part of, you know, the fun of tying flies is liking what you're tying. And, and so again, this one, um, it, it serves a purpose for me just because I can just put on music and kind of zone out. You can make it any color. Um, you, can, you can just, the imagination is what's there and what's so cool about it. The, the difficult part I think is sometimes knowing again, what am I getting? What do I, what do I have that I can work with? But game changers in a lot of different variation, the feather game changers, I mean, those are almost just a work of art. You can take an entire side of a pheasant and you just are keep, you keep layering it around. So instead of that wrap, you're building it with feathers. You can use schlopplin, you can use marabou. There's, the weight is what's different. And I think what's really cool right now is because the newer materials out for some of us light lifters, that's the fly we can throw all day. The, the marabou where it soaks up so much and some of the heavier materials too, no, an hour. And then, <laughs> then I'm like looking for anything light, um, but they're, they're just fun. And this one's, so I don't want to have any cringes on here. So this one has a stinger hook in the back as well. So depending on what's legal in your water, you could do the two hook setup on this. Um, and again, it's just, you tie in same materials you're doing the, connections you add in your hook you do more connections off the front and then you add in your hook but just kind of fun and then the rest is all just the arts and crafts project that happens with the markers are you amy are you familiar with a guy named davy wooten down in arkansas yeah he's a pretty cool guy i got to meet him 20 some plus years ago and uh, down at north arkansas fly fishes when i went down and he was tying his shad pattern and it was the first articulated fly I'd ever seen. But if I remember correctly, he used a heavy piece of monofilament between the two hooks at the time. And, and basically it was for the shad kill. When the water drops out of the lakes of Bull Shoals, they get sucked. The shad gets sucked up through the turbines when they turn the generators on and the fish come floating up on the shad float up the top of the river and it's just free eating for the fish and so you catch some pretty big fish out there but I've, I've always wanted to go fish the shad kill but i would never had uh, gotten to do that but I thought that it's the same kind of thing though you just but it's like a big the fly he tied I remember it was just like a big um like what I call the big ass wooly booger with the thing in the yep. middle of it and it just 
basically just you just cast it on top of the water and wiggle wiggle the line a little bit over them and you know that's all there is to fish in them you have to be on a boat though to do it well and and i think that's the thing definitely carl as far as with the boat access it makes a whole difference on this as far as how and and again there's so many different variations this one has the mono in between it just depends on what if you're using a heavy mono then absolutely I think a lot of the fun is also um, using what you have. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy only because it's a name brand on. Um, but yeah, those are some, the, the, the first articulated ones. And then now you see the Helgamite, Hel, Helgamite, I can never say that correctly. Um, I mean, now you see everything from stone flies that are articulated. It's just a matter of knowing how, how to connect some of those, which really just changes it all. And if anything, it's just, again, it's a good day of time. But yeah, there's some amazing tires that have come out of Arkansas, I believe. I think they might have the, they might might have earned those bragging rights. Oh, I think so. I mean... I'm, trying, I'm still, so I'm kind of a determined person. <laughs> Imagine that. So I'm still trying to recover. I'm still trying to recover this fly that I busted off before. <laughs> I'm back to I'm back to working it again. Because otherwise, Bob Betts will just go to go to bed, just shaking his head, going, "Man, oh no, no, no!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picking on you, Bob. It's good to see you this week. Oh, I, I, yeah. I just I got here late. I was doing uh, shopping and I got caught up in the traffic. It was awful. Mm. Woo. Hey, anyway. right. You're, you're retired, right? Oh yeah. Twice. Why do you shop? Why do you shop at rush hour? Um, <laughs> let's see. I got to come up with an extraordinary <laughs> ex challenge. He's retired. He doesn't have a watch. So he didn't know what time it was. Okay, okay, we'll we'll go with that one then. Yeah, <laughs> the week or the month sometimes, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that was, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Anybody else have any questions or conversation? We were trying to trying to show a little steam, streamer love this week for uh everybody who's put up with all of our dry flies and last week was the, the little itty bitty ones. Anybody have anything? Oh, Amy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody uh, uh, on in the group has a, a cricket machine that uh, used for scrapbooking. A lot of some of your wives might might have them, but uh, anyway, uh, you can use it to die cut uh, different uh, shapes. This one's for a hopper. You can make it different sizes uh, by stretching the software, but but they uh, just punch out. You can uh, make slick, slick little uh, hoppers out out of the. You just uh, download an SVG file uh, from the internet uh, from a company called Fossil Fly Fishing. Um, Here's what I found. Yep. Okay. What? <laughs> but but anyway, uh, they make uh, neat little hoppers, and you don't. Have to buy the uh, uh, dye, the dyes that, that cut them out. And you can buy different ones for uh, ants and uh, bugs, and, and uh, you can stretch them and make them any size, depending on what hook you're trying to do. It took me uh, uh, about, uh, I, I would say, about two minutes to, to cut about 30 of them out of this piece of uh, foam it's just two wow. millimeter foam that, that's amazing at least i, I know what margie's going to get for christmas well, christmas, <laughs> came, <laughs> christmas came early for me this year yeah uh -oh. that's, a, that's a brand new 400 centimeter nirvana tankara rod which i'm taking out tomorrow because it's going to be 71 degrees here in omaha and we're going to do a little trout fishing. So we'll give this a try. It's a 13 footer. 
Don't break that one. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going, John? <laughs> I'm just headed up to a Fontenelle Park. The trout are supposed to be on the bite right now. Outstanding. So, uh, speaking of uh, trout fishing at 71 degrees, I plan on going down to uh, Merrimack Springs tomorrow. It's supposed to be a gorgeous day. So, oh. anybody uh, wants to join me, I'll be happy to meet you someplace or meet you down there. I might see you because I'm going to Lebanon to work on my land in the morning. I'm actually thinking about swinging by Merrimack because you can't do the catch and release at Bennett. So I was actually thinking about doing that. So you might see me. Cool. As soon as I win the lottery, I'll be uh, joining you guys too with my ear. Well, I'll, I'll fly down. <laughs> Good deal. So, so Jim, when, when are you going to get there? I I'm going to try to leave the house around 7.30, which would get me there about 9 o'clock. Okay. I may look into that. Yeah, I'm planning to go back out to Jefferson Lake again on Sunday morning. Fish for a while. Might have to join you on that one, Roger. <laughs> Because now I have a whole different game plan in mind. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And I got a little update on uh, Walt. Oh, good. Talk, talk with him today. I guess guess he had his heart get into irregular rhythm and they had to shock it and stuff to get it back in. So I had a little setback on that versus waiting for a kidney being on the kidney list. Doctors uh, kind of giving him different advice as to when he could go ahead with things is his uh, <clears throat> kidney doctor saying, no, don't let him catheterize the heart and do other stuff like that because it'll impact your kidney and the kidney people saying, oh, don't worry about it. We can handle that. He says, oh yeah, that'd probably just be putting me on a dialysis machine and that ain't going to happen. So, so he's uh, stuck even a little tighter at home, a little more restricted. Oh no. So Sorry to hear that. I had no idea that he was having those kind of problems. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think he found out this summer that he was the the liver. I know was an issue, but the the heart stuffs the heart stuffs kind of a newer thing. So, uh, all right, Roger, we'll keep him. You know, let him know we're thinking of him, and if he needs anything, I think since you're talking to him, um, yeah, he's pretty open. If anybody likes wants to go fish for bluegill or whatever, and his. Uh, excuse me, uh, old quarry pond that he has in his property and stuff. He's and as long as he doesn't coming out. As long as he doesn't ask you to take out all the cattails, then you're in good shape. But uh, <laughs> he does he does like he does like company. Well, I'm gonna turn my little lemons into lemonade here. So I've been working on this while we've been just talking and uh, just giving you a little recovery view yay it can happen um so now i've moved into a brush on the top part of this and just finishing out the front but yay i was just so yeah stick with it <laughs> stick with it even when you don't like the fly or when it keeps jumping out of your now i'm in a hook so it's not gonna jump out of my vice for me um same thing as far as not mashing down these materials and just keep brushing it out. So that's all I got. Just like owning a loss of ops of oh, shits. <laughs> just yeah, keep, good, Amy. Brush, keep keep brushing the hair out of its eyes, right? Well, I, the first time and I thought, did I really just hear that? Because you can actually hear it on this side. And, and I know you guys could hear it like the second and third, well, and fourth and fifth time that would pop out my vice, but the first time I heard it and I thought, did I just hear that? Yep. And we just have to laugh because that's like a thread break or anything else. And it happens. Um, what makes us so amazing as fly tires though, is we didn't just chuck the whole thing across the room. Um, but I'll just give us all a pat on the back for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us do. It just takes a little bit where you pick it up and bring it back. <laughs> Yeah, some of us.
because it's it's kind of like the computer thing, right? You just turn it off, walk away from it. Um, I, I do like this fly because you can actually, you get to a certain point and you can just walk away. Um, come back to it later, pick it up later. I have half parts that I've started before and I just wasn't real thrilled on the color combination. So it's a good, you know, some of the other flies we do, you can't start stop and start like this. So, yeah. all right, all, well, what, um, I guess we, we kind of, we've run the gamut on uh, a lot of different tying options and ideas. Anybody have any questions or suggestions or topics for next week? Thanksgiving. So if that gives anybody any juice to think, it's Thanksgiving turkey buy -outs. week. Buyouts? Yeah, turkey buyouts. I don't know. If turkey buyouts. Turkey buyouts, huh? All right. Oh, okay. Turkey I think, buyout. you know what? I think we're going to mix it up and everybody gets to go tie a buyout fly and then we're going to have a, a fly off here. Yeah, I like that. So, I mean, something no. different. So tie up, tie no. up a turkey fly. We'll, no. we'll go around and show everybody on the camera. Okay. And, uh, it, and then we'll have some demonstrations on how to tie turkey buyouts. <laughs> okay. Now, now you said two things. You said a turkey fly and a turkey buyout fly. Which one's it going to be? A turkey buyout fly off. Okay. Fly with turkey buyouts. How's that? All right. There we go. Yeah. How about Copper turkey John round? time. Copper John oh, time. Turkey rounds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Prince Nim. Let's Nimp. see. I may have to do a uh, Tinkara fly with a buyout. I've never tried that. That should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you can use a whole uh, wing, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, with that new rod that I got, it'll handle it. <laughs> I'm already looking around, getting ideas going. So any part of turkey, or do we just want to keep it to buyouts? No, oh, I'll least be turkey rounds. Turkey rounds. Turkey is a key word. Yeah, okay. let's do any part of the turkey. You know, I mean, uh, the gizzards, yeah. you know, the whatever. <laughs> gizzards. Stuffing. And, and spin a little deer hair and make it into a turkey. Okay. Sounds like the challenge is on. That'll right. be next week. Then uh, next See Monday, same bat channel. Sounds good. Nice. All right, everybody. Enjoy. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.